Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. Listen up. Win Bet is now live in all these states, and the excitement of Win Las Vegas has finally landed in online sports betting and casino play. From boosted parlays to live in game offs on every major sport, Win Bet gives you the tools to win. Sign up today for your risk free $1,000 sports bet. Download the Win Bet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. You're listening to Mile High Insiders with Nick Kendall and Luke Patterson. Head on over to milehighhuddle.com for all things Broncos. Now, it's time to find out what's going on behind the walls of UC Health Training Center. Welcome in. It is March 5th. It is the single best day of the Combine, in my opinion, going on right now. The big men, the defensive linemen um, out there mm. just, you know, running crazy stupid times. So Luke, Luke, what's your 40 time? Could you, could you break five? Oh man, I haven't ran the 40. That's an interesting question. You know what? We should set up like an independent combine where we all like have someone time us and see how pathetic we do. I can't remember what my 40 was. I can tell you it wasn't fast if that's what we're hinting at. Yeah, no, I Jordan Davis <laughs> running a official, what was it, 478 at 340 Dude, pounds. It's a big boy could move. Unbelievable show of athleticism going on out there. And uh, this is, I mean, I know it's the underwear Olympics, but it's still a lot of fun. And this is why the NFL is king, right? It's we're a month removed from the Super Bowl, and we're in the midst of basketball season, everything NFL is on everybody's mind. So, uh, we got Kathy coming in. Hi, all. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? What up, Kathy? Good to see you. Thanks for joining Nick and I in MHI. You can find Nick at Nick Kendall MHH on Twitter. Yours truly at Luke Patterson LP. Scott on the ones and twos at Scout Kennedy. And away we go. We've got a killer show to get to you guys. And that Aaron Rodgers guy, man, that stuff won't go away. So we got to talk about the latest developments with Aaron Rodgers. He will play football in 2022, but where? We will get into that a little bit later. Let's say what's up to some friends in the show. Our, our guy, Peter Middleton. Sorry about that, Scott. I, I kind of took over. Okay. Uh, Peter Middleton coming in saying those combine highlights were so much fun. Good morning out there in uh, Cambodia, I believe. Yep. Um, absolutely love Peter's dedication to not only MHI, MHH, all the shows that you're on, but to the NFL offseason. This is something that you see fans do. You see fans immediately start the discussion of what is the fastest 40 yard dash time ever recorded mean and translate into football. Can that happen? We know that speed kills look no further than the AFC West with Tyree Hill. So these are fascinating things, Nick, the combine yeah. Rogers news. We've got a huge show to get to man. So I'm super pumped. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just a lot of fun. I think Peter's right. You know, how often is Jordan Davis going to have to run 40 yards in a straight line? Not very often. 10 yards was probably more important there, but still to see the athletic display, it's uh so it's I watched, incredible. I watched the 30 for 30 X for XFL the other day. Like this is, you know, Vince McMahon, this is the XFL. And it was talking about how awful it was, but some of the concepts that came actually stuck, right? Like the sky mm-hmm. cam and things like that. But one of them I had completely forgot. They literally placed a football in the middle of the field here and had two players players going after it and just colliding there were multiple injuries before the game even started so unless they bring back some crazy rule that big guy's not going to be running like that ever again. no no probably not although i mean <laughs> he actually is pretty good uh chasing down quarterbacks as they break contain um which is pretty fun he's got some good highlights out there uh we'll get into the we got two months still of the uh, discourse we got dylan von ark saying sup broncos country make sure you guys hit the like button on the way in and subscribe if you haven't already Paul's in the house. Good to see you, Paul. Paul's always a good supporter of the show. Good evening, Broncos country. How's everybody doing tonight? Looking forward to another great pod. So it's going to be great with you here, Paul. Thank you You know it, Paul. You know it. Paul, Paul, my guy. I absolutely love the energy. Broncos country Saturday night is very important to Nick and I. This is our passion. Scott as well. This all these guys at MHH, we're writing on the weekends. We're podcasting. I mean, you can't find many shows that don't one, don't charge you. Two, uh, our reading and stuff is free. Go on over to milehighhuddle.com. We have guys and gals working through the night, Broncos country, to give you the greatest up-to-date coverage, news, and analysis, everything that you can hope and dream of that is Denver Broncos. So I'm super pumped, man, to see see good comments like that. And let us know how we can improve. 
Yeah. Nick, that's something that you've referenced as well in, in our comments and things like that, too. But uh, we're really happy to have everybody here on MHI tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, your guys, your favorite position is going on right now, Luke, with the linebackers. So trying to stay up on that. But first, yep. let's get in here. Jay Kozad, after 16 years in Green Bay, a part of him might want to change the scenery. Who's he talking about? Aaron Rodgers. And we have Ian Rappaport saying, uh, with all eyes on the Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers in his future, here is the latest. Sources say Rodgers is torn on where he wants to play in 2022. While many in the NFL expect him to return, there's a lot of positivity in Green Bay uh, he, that he is going back, but he's going back and forth on what he wants. So uh, who knows? There's been a lot of reports here. It sounds also like the Broncos have been further emerging as a massive landing spot for the quarterback's uh, position. And it wasn't just Aaron Rodgers' name that was thrown out there today for a landing spot. It was also uh, Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson. So uh, really? George Payton, What's... yep. Yes. What's going uh, on with Deshaun Watson? I saw some Russell Will Russell Wilson rumblings, but Deshaun Watson in Houston. Why don't you update us on that? Uh, we're still waiting on that. I know that dispositions have been uh, going on, um, and I think it's very much a right. uh, hurry up and wait situation. I'm huh. guessing that by the draft, um, we might have some final resolution. And the other thing about the draft is that is the only time of the entire calendar year where when the draft is actually going, uh, teams can trade four years worth of draft capital. Um, so right now, let's say if the Broncos made a trade with the Packers today, just for example, they could only send picks for 2022, 2023, and 2024. The moment the Jags are officially on the clock, 2025's draft capital becomes unlocked. Um, so that's a weird mm -hmm. window during that actual draft where you can actually trade those future picks as well. So that might be something that you need to uh, consider as well. I know that means this is going to be dragged out longer, um, but uh, again, Broncos are a team that you might want to keep some eyes on there. It sounds like the four... Uh, Watson, another team that was linked was the uh, the Eagles. And for Aaron Rodgers, teams that were linked were the uh, AFC teams, uh, the Broncos, the Steelers, and the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, the Tennessee Titans still hanging on to that dream that just because Aaron Rodgers is buying up property in near Nashville does not mean that he's coming to Tennessee. Tennessee would have to literally give up uh, King Henry and, and plenty more. Why would you do that? Uh, Ryan Tannehill, trust me, I get it, but... Listen, Broncos no. country, I'm unwavering with where I'm at right now. I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers is coming to Denver. I reported a month ago in January what I was hearing in the Shrine. I felt confident then. I still feel confident now, Nick. Mm -hmm. I feel more confident than ever right now. Listen, Green Bay can say that they feel good. Green Bay can get Brian Gutenkunst up there, whatever the hell his name is, and they can say, we're working on stuff, and I'm trying to be patient with him and all this kind of stuff. Dude, it is March 5th. It is time to get going. NFL free agency is right here around the corner. Aaron Rodgers said, I'm not going to take that long. Really? I mean, we all have Aaron Rodgers fatigue. I get it. I get it. But look, man, if you got a chance to grab this quarterback, a back-to-back -back NFL reigning MVP, you have those deals in place. And that's exactly what the Steelers, the Broncos, and the Titans have with Green Bay. Yeah, no, it's it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, gosh, it just seems... I am so ready for this to be over because I can't take it anymore. My heart is just being pulled in every direction because, I mean, you know, say what you will about Rodgers and all the other stuff going on right now. Is he a prima donna? Yes. Is he maybe a little bit of a weirdo? Yes. Um, maybe you should hear some of the things about Peyton Manning and John Elway behind the scenes, too. You know, there's some not always the uh, sometimes ruffling some feathers of those around them. That's just kind of uh, comes with the territory of being a great quarterback, it seems. Maybe sometimes a little eccentric. Uh, but Rodgers, man, if you can get him here... It, giddy up you know the football is going to be exciting in denver again this team is ready to go you're never going to have a perfect roster um in the nfl period um but if you have yourself a top quarterback heck let's just call him the best quarterback in football back-to-back -back mvp yeah that's kind of put your feather in your cap on that one uh then you have a chance so it'll be see what happens it will be disappointing if uh rogers gets traded to a the Steelers or the Titans though. I will say if that I'd, I'd rather him go back to green Bay and be like, Oh, we never had a chance anyway. than to see him go to the Steelers or Titans and be like, God bleep and bleep. Like, why didn't we get him? Yeah, I could see the connection with Pittsburgh. I really can Tennessee. I don't, I just, I don't. And it could just be me not seeing it. I'm not saying there's yeah. nothing there, but I could see you saw Mike Tomlin and the love eyes and Aaron Rodgers and all that. But Peter Middleton weighing in saying Rodgers is getting traded. It just depends on whom the Broncos will be so disappointed if it's not them. And uh, yeah, man, who would have thought on Friday night, Ian Rappaport would break this news. I heard driving around the Mile High City today that um, Aaron Rodgers is officiating David Bak Bakhtiari's wedding today. So um, 
I don't know. It feels like we're trying to speculate on every little move that Aaron Rodgers is making. Can you imagine the distraction that that is in that wedding? I mean, it's just, it's Aaron Rodgers. And then I start to speculate because I'm obsessed with this and I'm unreasonable, Nick. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe he doesn't want to tell David Bakhtiari that he wants to come to Denver because that would ruin his best friend's wedding. It's, it makes no sense, Nick. I, I fully admit it, man, but it's pure speculation and it's absolutely killing me. I had predicted earlier in the week, I'm like, Aaron's going to come out and say he wants to play football, but we're not going to know where. And yeah. it's just like this guy has predictable BS sometimes, but we got to wait through it because he's that damn good. Sometimes, you know, the uh, prettiest girl in class needs to be told she's pretty. And I feel like that's a little bit what you get with Rodgers. Shout out to Peter Middleton coming in there with the uh, the first stars today. We really appreciate that. Keeping the lights on. We also got Dennis coming in uh, $5 super over on YouTube. Thank you guys very much for uh, supporting the show. Dennis says, which play, which couple of players do you think have had the best combine and who surprised you surprised you the most good or bad? Uh, I mean, I gosh, I guess it would have to be the guys who are the biggest surprise so far to me is Jordan Davis. I knew Jordan Davis was a good athlete, but um, you're, are you familiar with uh, Ross relative athletic score, Luke? Um, it's what math bomb does where they take the, he takes the size and uh, the athletic testing and it puts out a score because a bigger guy running a four or five is more impressive than a smaller guy running a four or five. So size hmm. is uh, factored in into okay. it. Um, Jordan Davis had now officially has the second highest Ross score of all time of any player in the history of the NFL combine. Um, because of his size and how he tests. He also had a 10-3 broad, which is insane for a 340-pounder. The only player who has ever had a higher Ross, uh, RAS, is Calvin Johnson. So Ooh, pretty pretty trauma. incredible. Hall of Famer. Pretty, yeah, pretty incredible. I mean, he's uh, – with Jordan Davis, I think there is some stuff there with – he's lost 20 pounds since his playing days, uh, since – you know, Georgia won the national championship. So that is something maybe you're going to see a little bit of athleticism there, but I think billing him as where his body is going right now and how much cleaner he looks to doesn't look as uh, he doesn't look like he's carrying that much sloppy weight. I think that plugging him and pinning him to just being this plug nose tackle is holding him back. I think he's got enough juice where he could be playing a penetration one role. He might even be able to play some three technique stuff out there with the, uh, the athleticism that he showed. So he's definitely on play at nine. Um, The fact that he's, Showing the, the athletic, it's not just the 40, it's the 10 yard splits. It's the jumps. It's the, the size cutting down that weight. Um, that's, that's going to be a big thing Huge. for him, but um, he's, he's really interesting. Most impressive guy so far has been Trevon Walker though. He's an absolute freak. Um, he's testing like miles Garrett right now. He's only, I think he just turned 21 years old last month. So he's still kind of figuring out his run defense is already great. Has no idea what he's doing in pass rush yet. But if there's one position to bet on the athletic traits, it's the edge rusher. Edge, a position in need for the Denver Broncos. And for me, man, with the linebackers, it's absolutely crazy, right? Because it's basically mm -hmm. N'Kobe Dean or Devin Lloyd. And I absolutely love them both. I really love Devin Lloyd. So my my eyes are really on him right now. Mm -hmm. um, I could see the Broncos making a crazy move. Let's say they don't land Rodgers. Let's just ignore quarterback for whatever reason here. Um, what if the Broncos tried to draft a linebacker or Jermaine Johnson? Oh, my God, I'd be so happy. His draft stock is soaring, Nick. Um, but, yeah, man, I just – you look at the quarterbacks and in in how they threw, and they're throwing on air, and – it is what it is. But when you've got that cannon like Malik Willis, man, and you take that seven step drop and then we've all seen the video out there on Twitter. Holy cow, man. I mean, yeah. I get it. It's just the underwear Olympics, but dang, that, that boy can rip it. Um, and then seeing his video of just him being a, a good man, you know, helping yeah. helping a fellow American in need. Um, that was pretty, pretty cool and pretty impressive when the cameras aren't watching. Right. Mom always said, do something good when uh, no one's watching. And that's what he's doing. So it's cool to hear stories like that. Let's get to my guy, your guy, Travis Weber. What's up, Travis? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining Nick, Scott, and I on MHI. Good evening, Nick, Luke, and Scott. And what's up, Broncos country? I wish Rodgers will just make up his mind. I will. I know that we want that unicorn, but enough already. If he doesn't want that to happen, or Wilson, or Watson, uh, draft Devin Lloyd, please. Boom, Travis, there you go. Perfect. He's on the Devin Lloyd train. Uh, Devin Lloyd from Utah. You've covered him on MHI or on MHH.com. I've covered him on MHH.com. It's a mouthful. Um, but N'Kobe Dean's a damn good linebacker, too. I don't mm -hmm. want anybody to think just because I kind of 
prefer uh, Devin Lloyd that I would not want an off ball linebacker named Nicobe Dean. Um, linebacker is a position of need, just like Edge, Nick. And I, I get it. Quarterback is the most important position in all yeah. of sports, but they've got two free agent linebackers. And I'm not so sure that I get Josie Jules can't put out there. We'd love to come back in the Broncos, but uh, we'd love to have you back. Well, let's see a deal get done because yeah. I got George Payton spouting off at the mouth last week about wanting to sign Melvin Gordon back. Give me a break. Melvin Gordon's not going to take a pay cut or anything like that. You think he wants to get Josie Jewell back on this team? No. So you've got to go in the draft somewhere. I don't, I don't know if it's in the first round. There's some damn good linebackers in this draft. Yeah, it's a deep class. Um, a guy up there, kind of closer to you, Montana State, Troy Anderson. I think he's all-time leading rusher for Montana State, too. That played quarterback there, played running back. Then he made the conversion to yep. uh, linebacker and was the conference um the all conference defensive player of the year this year just ran a four, four, one, which is insane. Holy for cow. Really? I didn't know yep. that. A four, yeah, he's four, a freak one, athlete. four, wow. four, one. Um, he's, he's flying. Um, it's a really, really good linebacker class. Christian Harris ran a four, four. Um, unfortunately, Devin Lloyd ran only a four, seven, but you know what? Let him fall. Um, let Devin Lloyd fall. I think for linebacker, the actual 40 is not as predictive for success at the next level compared to some other positions. Um, three cone. Three cone, three cone is extremely important for me for linebackers. Yeah. Like, and I don't have times memorized, but it's all about how lateral you can move. It's change of direction. I mean, you yeah. have got to represent that. How did Muma do from Wyoming? Does you uh, know, have eyes on that kid here at the end of the month? He ran a four six six, which isn't incredible, but his jumps were out of the gym. So he's got a lot. My favorite testing actually is the vertical and broad jump because you really okay. can't train that much for that. You either are explosive Natural. or you're not. Um, the three cone, we've seen it actually, it's getting, it's getting so refined training wise that, uh, like every single year we're having all time breaking records in the three cone. I think that one's maybe going to start to go a little bit, uh, out of the way. Also, the other thing is these teams are gathering GPS data and they have the deep data right now. It's just, it hasn't happened over enough draft classes where you have the ability to look back and like, okay, um, Micah Parsons, GPS data. We know now that he's an absolutely incredible NFL player. What did his data look like in, in the college? And how does that compare to prospect X in the 2026 draft? So I think this combine, we're about five years away from the combine measurements not being as valuable because you will have standardized GPS data. Um, but still, it'll be really interesting. But Devin Lloyd running a 4.7, I don't really care. As long as he's not running a 4.8, that's fine. I bet you'll run like a 4.65 next. Muma 4.66, so fluid in space, so, so intelligent. So very good linebackers. Also very good coming in here. We've had some good support here. Mark's a big supporter of us as well. We really appreciate you. Mark. Yeah, he says, uh, hey, Nick, Trevon Walker and Jordan Davis were freaks today. Walker may not make it to nine. Uh, and it was Pete Schrager today before hmm. the uh, Pete Schrager of uh, NFL Good Morning Football, I think is the name of the show, um, where he said that uh, the he was hearing that Trevon Walker was going to put on such a sh show today that maybe you should start penciling Trevon Walker in the top three of your mock drafts. So really? uh, uh, the top three. Uh, how do you what's your initial impression because I, I i cringe just a little on it but i mean damn it that's because there's so many good pass rushers here dude like, yeah and he's freaky i mean he's doing all these things but he's weighing he's 25 pounds more than everybody else he also has a seven foot wingspan so he's i mean he's incredible um as far as the athletic profile still doesn't know what he's doing with his hands still needs to work on a pass rush plan but he was 20 years old last year and his run defense is teaching tape it's it's really really good textbook absolutely yeah. love it man textbook dude and yeah man it's so hard because right this is a season of lies too there's yeah. information being put out there you got to watch what you're stepping in folks because mm -hmm. these agents the my agents. god nick yeah. you've been at the combine like i've covered mm -hmm. pro days all different kind of shit so whoop, there we go uh <laughs> whoop whoop just cut that one out but no man it's one of those things agents put stuff out there and people yeah attach it to it and then they regurgitate it so you've got to truly see this is where good things can come into play when you look at the combine you evaluate the 40 the three cone their reach their hand size right their their jumping ability some of those things start to really weed some of those players out in different phases mm -hmm. you've got a's b's c's one twos or threes either one of those those type of grading systems but it, it's just it's fascinating to me um I wish more football was around it, like instead of it just being the shells of, you know, Under Armour or Nike or whatever. Yeah. But Retro Rob coming in here saying Rodgers is a chess player. Uh, I think he's got to be a chess player, right? And I guess yeah. we're all playing checkers, hoping to get on the board with him because obviously Broncos country, we're talking about the news of the weekend. Friday night, he and Rappaport basically came out and, and reported that Aaron Rodgers stated he would like to play in 2022, but he's unsure mm -hmm. where. And, um, 
no specific teams were mentioned. There were some reports out there that trade packages have already been put together. Uh, Take it for what it's worth. Preparations have been made. I'm not saying I'm confirming anything or I'm just speculating here. If you're in the market, Nick, for Aaron Rodgers, you've had a trade package together for how long? Over a year now? I mean, come on. If you think that teams are scrambling or waiting until Aaron says, hey, okay, I'm interested in leaving Green Bay. No, that's not it. Um, we've got three teams that we know about, right? We talked about it in, in addition to Green Bay, obviously. We've got the Denver Broncos, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Tennessee Titans all sitting at that same table wanting some of that Aaron Rodgers pie. Yeah. I that, Honestly, whatever it takes, it, there is a price because of Aaron Rodgers' age where it is a little bit too much. Um, but if you're talking about giving up nine this year, your 2023 first, uh, Jerry Judy, and a second this year, you know, maybe even one more s- starter, that's it's it's going to hurt. But you know what hurts is continually fielding subpar quarterbacks in a division where, honestly, if there was a redraft of the entire league right now, the first three quarterbacks off the board would probably be some some order of Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, and Josh Allen. That's just the reality of where we're at uh, with those young quarterbacks. So Broncos got to go out there and get one themselves. Uh, otherwise, we're, I mean, we always kind of hype up, oh, maybe this Denver team can be pretty good this year because we get excited about it. And it sucks to live in a world where, you know, why even get your hopes up? That's that's not a way to be a fan, really, in my opinion. Uh, but if you brought in Rodgers, it's no more, you know, BS, hope, hopes and dreams. You know, it's like we are here. We're ready to go. And uh, the last two teams win the Super Bowl. Won a, won a Super Bowl the first year they had a quarterback in there. If Denver gets Rodgers, giddy up, good to go. We're, we're competing day one. Mm. And yeah, I think there's something to be said for that last statement, Nick, where you're talking about quarterbacks that look at Matt Stafford and that division, how competitive that division yeah, is. That's gosh. that's pretty impressive feat. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying neither are you that it would be automatic with Rodgers, but damn it, yeah. we like our chances. Pete coming back in. Uh, the first round of the draft is starting to get really exciting. Uh, just as hoping... Just as I'm hoping we trade it. I don't want some of my favorites to be Raiders. That's interesting. Josh McDaniels getting a second chance out there. Um, Mike Mayock out. Um, Man, Brian Kelly went over from the Broncos to the Raiders, if memory serves. So the Raiders are rebuilding. They're trying to rebrand. They're trying to rise from the ashes. They won't. Uh, but I don't know what Josh McDaniels is looking for. His draft here was so bizarre with Tebow and DT and like, it's, yeah, it's weird. Cause you don't know what he's looking for. Exactly. What do you, what do you think the Raiders are wanting to do? Because this is something I, I haven't really thought about. And I really like Pete's, uh, suggestion here. The Broncos need to figure it out. Otherwise they could be looking at some other stars and facing them twice a year. Yeah, uh, what what could the Raiders do? They're a team that they, I think they're sticking with that cover. Uh, I think they might be actually shifting from that cover three, but no doubt about it, they're going to look to bring in some help for Derek Carr to help implement this offense. Um, outside of Henry Ruggs, that's a team that doesn't really have many alphas at wide receiver, so I could see them bringing in a wide receiver. No doubt about that. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know. They're going to have a good chance at some good players there in the, what are they picking, about 22, 20? So um, luckily, that's a Raiders team last year. They are a team that, I would expect them to be a massive regression candidate. All the advanced statistics surrounding the Raiders last year was like, this was the worst team that made the playoffs. And uh, they're, what are they? They still finished with 10 wins, but a lot of the data surrounding them said like, this is a team that should not have won more than six or seven games. So you would expect that to uh, come back down a bit next season, but what are they going to do? Who knows? Josh McDaniels can be weird. I guess I'm hoping that he will, maybe take another running back in the first round or take a uh, pass rusher that doesn't really fit the scheme like Robert Ayers for the Broncos. But I do worry a little bit. I think he's got a decent wide receiver eye. Uh, Maybe he doesn't because the Patriots have been terrible at drafting wide receivers. But uh, when when he was with Denver, I mean, getting Demarius Thomas, that was a hell of a pick. And Eric Decker round three, that was a hell of a pick too. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, you're right on the head. Raiders picking at 22. It'd be interesting to see if maybe they wanted to move up for a DB. Um, the uh, remember Philly sitting there at 15, 16, and 19. So Philly's got a lot of ammo if they want to move up or move back. That's what they're going to do. And uh, man, it's so bizarre to when you start to wonder what the AFC West is going to do. Then you look at the Chiefs and they could go any number of directions. They still got to figure out that O line. Bengals, you know, they're probably going O line. Um, but, but the Chargers, that's an interesting one. Also, it's important to keep eyes on your division. And I think it's going to be a competitive draft, Nick. It's so mm-hmm. deep, it's so many different positions. 
positions, but because the quarterbacks do not stand out like they have in pre- previous drafts, we're we're sitting here and it's kind of downplayed. And I, I wish that wasn't the case, but quarterback is king. Yep, quarterback is king. But if that's the case, then uh, edge rusher is queen. So really excited. Some other guy, Jermaine Johnson's running like a four seven um, at two hundred and sixty pounds. Inc- that's incredible. And Boye Mafe looks like he actually might be pushing right now for one of the best uh, combine performances from an edge in quite some time. Um, coming in at oh gosh, uh, two hundred and sixty pounds, two uh, six foot four, and he ran a four five seven forty. So man, this is Jesus. this is such an incredible edge class. Um, I feel like it's the Oprah Winfrey meme. Uh, you get an edge rusher. You get an edge rusher. You get an edge rusher. It's they're falling I, off trees, Nick. They're falling bet. off trees. <laughs> yeah, thank God for uh, the Broncos because they really need uh, edge, and thank God for Scott too. Uh, Scott's Falcons really needs a pass rush as well. Uh, Travis Weber coming back in. Thank you so much, Travis. We appreciate you saying uh, what's up with Coral. Uh, is Denver interested, or is Peyton doing his due diligence? Oh. Um, it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, Matt Corral. Uh, he is a. Uh, not participating in the a lot of the drills or didn't participate because of the ankle injury he suffered in the Sugar Bowl. I believe it was the Sugar Bowl. It was the Sugar um, Bowl, yep. He is going to throw at his pro day. I think he throws the same day as – it might be the same day as Desmond Ritter. Um, I think the Cincinnati pro day and the Ole Miss pro day might be the exact same day. So maybe we can read some tea leaves there based on who the Broncos send where. Um, obviously, they'll have representatives at both. Uh, but will be interesting um, – I would assume that you're going to see more people go see Matt Corral because you've had Desmond Ritter twice now uh, throwing at the combine and also the senior bowl where Corral has had no exposure, Uh, but it will be interesting. I think Corral Denver is interested in Corral. I don't think they'd be interested in him at, at nine. I don't think any of these quarterbacks other than maybe Malik Willis um, because at quarterback in today's NFL, you know, the last five years, the guys who have been hitting have been the home run hitters. You need some splash plays from the quarterback. Malik Willis can give you some gosh darn splash plays. Don't see that from the other quarterbacks in this class. Um, but uh, if Corral falls to, you know, pick 30, 31, 32, uh, I could see, definitely see Denver uh, moving up and getting him. It's definitely hmm. a possibility. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's uh, it's so funny because I think Lance Zerline on the scouting profile says he like he's a small guy that plays with a big heart. It's like the first line, I think, when yeah. I read it. And that's just it. I mean, at six foot two, he's a small quarterback. And that sounds weird. Yeah, it sounds weird. Yeah, yeah. he's two hundred and twelve pounds. He's like the Drew Locke type of thin, right? He's he's, he's yeah, yeah. He's, he's not. There's a, not a lot to him, but I've heard guys in the scouting community and friends refer to him as this is what Baker Mayfield should be, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wow, okay, that's that's interesting because if my ears perk up, you know, you think of number one overall pick and uh, what where this guy's at, his draft stock mm-hmm. I think will improve after the pro day for sure. Yeah. Um, he, I could see him going in the first. I could see a team reaching hard. I'm talking like Carolina hard. Let's say Kenny Pickett, some weird thing happens and Pickett goes up. Um, The Panthers like Kenny Pickett a lot. Let's say Kenny Pickett goes away or something else, the change of heart. Maybe the Panthers are a team that makes a major reach for Matt Corral. Because I'm like you, man. I think if he's there at the end of the first or in the second, why the hell not? Yeah. But uh, I got to see a little bit more from Matt Corral. Kenny Pickett. Uh, I like Kenny Pickett. Don't love him. Malik Willis. He's probably my favorite right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm hearing rumblings. I don't know about you that that there's some um, evaluation concerns regarding progressions and the nature of the offense that he ran out at Liberty and stuff like that. But I, I really like this kid's demeanor. And Mm -hmm. I think he's so humble and down to earth. I think that he would be willing to learn and put in the hours because I think he's got the raw athleticism to do it. Oh, no doubt. He's got the raw athleticism. He's got the arm talent and he can create. And it's kind of not to, you know, compare him to Josh Allen per se, because he is not Josh Allen. No, but at Wyoming, a lot of times Josh Allen wasn't making the right read because he could fit the ball down the field and create explosive plays when even that's not the read he, he could, you know, he was that level of talent compared to the guys he was going against. Um, so I see that a little bit in Malik Willis too, where it's like, okay, I know my progression say, I got to get you this dump down, but if I pull it, I can run outrun these guys for 60 yards and a touchdown. Why wouldn't I do that? Um, so he's, he's really interesting. I also think that he would be a, I know this is a, a demanding offense as far as the mental side of things it can be, but Hackett with Green Bay ran a lot of quick pass game and a lot of RPO concepts. And Malik Willis coming out, you're going to have to run an RPO with a lot of boundary work at wide receiver with him. Malik Willis could do that day one, and that's what Hackett has done um, with Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if you saw my tweet the other day, but everybody keeps you know comparing Kyle Shanahan's offense to Sean Payton's offense to what Hack what are to uh, excuse me Sean Taylor Sean McVay's offense to what Hackett wants to do. 
if you look at the the heat charts for both Aaron Rodgers over the last three years and Jimmy Garoppolo at San Francisco, night and day difference, completely different. Uh, the Packers under Hackett didn't really attack the middle of the field. And that's something I think that with uh, Malik Willis using instead of the quick pass game, more of the quarterback run game to uh, replicate the quick pass game and the RPO looks on the outside. I think you could actually not an exact copy paste, but I think there is some fit there. Um, so I'd be really interested uh, in what that could look like for the Broncos at nine. Um, and it sounds like Malik Willis has been impressing as far as the intelligence and characters and demeanors as well at the, uh, at the combine. So it's maybe it's, it's a maybe. And it's one of those maybes where it's like a year away. Maybe, yeah. it, you know what I mean? Because it's, and I hate saying that because trust me, I'm the first one that wants them on the field, but I don't know who the veteran quarterback would be. Okay. You go first round or second round quarterback. Who's the veteran in the room? Drew Locke, Brett Mariota. Ribbon. I mean, Mar- Mariota, um, uh, God, Nick, I am so resistant. I don't even want to talk about Mitchell freaking Trubisky and some of the connections that are yeah. being made because I think they're real. And I would throw up if Mitch Trubisky was a Denver Bronco. What say you? I It would depend on the contract um, for me. Everything's about the contract. If he comes here for like a, what is essentially a one-year deal for $10 million per and it's easy to get out of after one year, I'd rather roll the dice on a boomer bust kind of guy uh, rather than be committed to a guy who's only ever going to be a double or a single for three or four years. You're not going to get that. I'm going to interrupt you right there. You're not going to get that a one year deal. I don't think. Okay. Then you're out because I, and the reason I say you're not going to get that is because I think people are anticipating a market for Mitchell Trubisky here. So when there's a market, you're not going to be the only team offering him something. If another team comes and offers him a multi-year deal, I guess I think that's fair, but man, that's tough. That's a tough sell. Bet on yourself, you know, what, which team is going to offer you the nucleus of talent around you? Like he would have in Denver, right? Like if he's going to go to Washington football team, you're just throwing to Terry McLaurin and who, uh, you know, who else? Like if, so if you're coming in here to right. Denver and you're betting on yourself on a, what is a cent, a two year deal, but structurally you could probably get out of after that first year. Um, you could really make yourself even more money down the line. So it, it would be a bet on yourself kind of situation, but it, I would not fault anybody for, uh, wanting more money and more security. No. Uh, speaking of more money coming in, Mark Schrader. God, you're so awesome, Mark. Thank you so much. Uh, what do you guys think of Chad Muma? He looks good today. Uh, they said he is good in coverage. He is my favorite coverage backer in this class. He is a former safety. He processes extremely well. I know he ran a 4-6 something uh, four, six, unofficially. Six. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what the official are because they've been kind of here. They've been up and down uh, all day today as far as the uh, – what the unofficial is to the official. Um, but for linebacker, I don't think that that blazing speed, especially for coverage, it doesn't, it doesn't matter as much. It's more about the enough factor. Like if he's out here running a four, eight, you're not fast enough, but if you're in the four, six, if you're processing, well, if you're smart, if you're fluid in space, that's much more important than the, uh, the 40 time, uh, in my opinion for the linebacker. So I love Muma. Um, if Muma is their starting pick 75, um, I'm interested. I don't think I would take him at pick 40 or pick 64 personally speaking, but there's going to be, some darn good linebackers in this class round three, round four, some that might even be good enough to be pushing for some starting rules uh, by the end of the season. Even I think it's that good and deep of a linebacker class. So you don't have to use a first round to get a good player there. Yeah, I completely agree. And I'm so biased when it comes to Muma, man, when he's in your backyard and he's from Colorado and up there at Wyoming, he's, he's a hell of a player. And there was an article put out by a, a Bengals publication talking about how Logan Wilson, how Logan Wilson's role is kind of playing a new role for, for this young cat coming out of yeah. Wyoming. And this kid is explosive. I don't care about, like you said, the forties, I know he's fast. I watched yeah. the film. I, is he a football player? Or is he a great athlete? That's, that's the biggest question you have to ask yourself when you start compromising some of these grades or making excuses or uh, just an overall evaluation rather. But yeah, I love Muma. Can't wait to see him. I will be boots on the ground at university of Wyoming in a few weeks. Naj, our guy coming in with the 1999, very generous super chat. Thank you very much for joining MHI. We appreciate you. It's been a minute, Naj. Hopefully you're well. Uh, saying, hey, brothers, how legendary would it be to have three Super Bowl championships with three Hall of Fame quarterbacks? Fun to dream. Yeah. 
Yep, that's a uh, that would be incredible. Um, I got goosebumps. I'm not yeah. like, <laughs> dude, I got goosebumps. I'm telling you, I know everybody is entitled to their own opinion, but I don't think the Rodgers to Broncos is dead by any means. Last week, it felt like, oh, but he's going back to Green Bay. Oh, he's going back to Green. Bay. Did he say he was going back to Green Bay? The only people saying that things are great in Green Bay are is Green Bay. Uh, he's yeah. missed his weekly appearance on Pat McAfee for what two two weeks now, a week two, um, yeah. two weeks out of three. So we're all just sitting on the edge of our cliff and hashtag Aaron Rodgers fatigue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, we just had some more data come in. Uh, Chad Muma talking about him, a ten foot nine broad, which is a ninety six percentile for uh, all linebackers uh, ever. So yeah, dude's explosive, a lot of fun. Uh, thank you so much, also Naj, for the support and the twenty dollars super. Um, we really appreciate you. Thanks it would be fun to dream. Let's let's make it come reality. And we're talking about all this draft stuff. And while it would stink for somebody who's obsessed with the draft to an extent, you know, not having a first round pick this year, not one having one next year too, stink, stinks even more. Um, knowing that all this stuff we're talking about, you know, it's good to have your bring in a good defensive lineman or an edge rusher. Doesn't matter until you have the quarterback, right? Your your ship doesn't leave the the freaking port until yeah. you have a quarterback. So um, I, I can go a few years of not having top draft picks. If it means you're bringing in some elite ability at the quarterback position, uh, Joey come in and saying, what's the ideal situation in the draft going forward? Specific player at nine trade back mm-hmm. and take a specific player with what compensation uh, again, <laughs> not to reiterate myself here, or repeat myself, but I think the ideal situation is you don't have that pick because you traded it to the Packers for Aaron Rodgers, And you go the next three to four years with Rodgers as the quarterback. After that, in my opinion, the best situation would be, I guess the best situation would be Malik Willis falls to you at nine and he's absolutely incredible. I would not, I'd rather personally, probably I like him if they love him, that's fine. But I think if you could trade back 10 picks, get yourself another day two pick this year and also a 2023 first round pick, which looks to be a much better quarterback crop. I think that would be the ideal scenario for me. You're talking about trading back 10 picks. Who are the guys that come into range there? Trent McDuffie would be an interesting one for me there. Cornerback from Washington. He's going to test well. Daxton Hill, safety slash nickel uh, is an interesting one. There might be some good edge rushers still there. Maybe Jermon Johnson, David Ajabo, who we haven't even talked about yet today. Boy, Mafe is like testing like an absolute psychopath right now. Um, Maybe Jordan Davis is down there as well. You talk about your linebackers. Um, So uh, Trevor Penning may be down there. So uh, that would be my ideal situation. Um, multiple ideal situations, but if it's not Rodgers, probably trading back, giving yourself another first round pick in 2023 and selecting some of those best guys available at that spot. Broncos country has to respect the process of George Payton being a scout and scouts try to get as much value as they can, whether that's in a player or in a pick. And now as a GM, he understands the value of picks and uh, he's got a whole ammo of picks to play with. Let's say Rodgers doesn't go. I would be disappointed. I'd be lying to t- if I told you, no, man, I'm good with them trading back. No, that number nine pick comes around. We're doing our, our war room. Everyone's watching. And the Broncos have traded the picks. Man, that would suck. It's always sucked. I hate it when it happens, but you got to be patient, right? It's because the draft is so long and you just care about what's happening with your team, right? But uh, in George Payton's process, you got to trust. If mm-hmm. he's trading back, I think that could signal him trading back up into the first later um he understands the quarterback has got to be addressed and that's something he talked about last week at his press conference in indianapolis uh peter middleton asking a good question here where will the broncos find their right tackle from the draft or free agency a uh, right tackle nick has been a tough one we've talked about it on this show for years uh, broncos country has talked about it for years you had some good play with bobby massey cam fleming You've had horrible plays with Menelik Watson, that other guy who doesn't want to play anymore, Jawan James. Uh, man, it's just really, really tough to find a right tackle. But there are some tackles in this draft, Nick. Are there any tackles that you're eyeing for the Broncos? Because one thing I, w- I remember that you said last draft, and I've been meaning to tell you this, was, was Spencer Spencer Long? Spencer Brown? Spencer Brown. Oh, man, don't get Scott started. Scott's going to uh, have a freaking heart injury. Spencer aneurysm. Brown, dude. I remember we were doing the war room, and you're like, I think the Broncos should go after Spencer Brown, and I think they wanted him. I think when George Payton was referencing, I wish we could have had a couple picks go back a little differently, but I'm not going to talk about it because, you know, I have to deal with these players. Um, I think that's a pick that got away because you saw how much he played in Buffalo. Those are valuable reps. I get he wasn't 
you know, amazing, but man, I was so impressed with him. So you could even go deep in the, in the draft this year with offensive tackle, but what do you think? There are a lot of first round talents, um, second round talent at offensive tackle, both some that can play left tackle, some that can play right. You can get out of Garrett Bowles contract in a year or so. Uh, so possible move to watch. Yeah, I thought uh, Braxton Jones um, from Southern Utah actually looked pretty interesting out there. I thought he tested mm-hmm. pretty darn well, a uh, smooth mover. Um, he had a pretty solid combine or a solid senior bowl, went out there and had a s- solid combine as well. So uh, we'll be interested to see him. I thought Bernard Raymond tested really well and looked smooth. I am a little bit scared because he had uh, sub 33 inch arms, um, which is not ideal. You know, that makes him an outlier but maybe that makes him fall to pick 40 or pick 64 where you can take him. I think he's a great scheme fit for the Broncos as well. He's a good mover. Uh, reminds me a lot of uh, oh, uh, Brian O'Neill uh, coming out of Pitt. Interesting. Um, really good athlete out there at the edge spot or the, I guess it's not edge, but the offensive tackle out on the wing. So it will be interesting um, to see what happens there with the other, uh, those classes. I thought Arizona state had an offensive tackle that I thought moved pretty well as also. So was, was it um, Deesh? My guy Deesh? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, I'm I'm big on him. I think what I think he's I think fifth rounder so so maybe yep. four, fourth rounder if he really climbs high. Uh, I saw him out there in Vegas at the Shrine, and he, I like his athleticism a lot. He kind of reminds me of Matt Lepsis, if I'm gonna be mm-hmm. honest, because not in so much his technique, but his raw athleticism right now. I mean, you got to remember Matt Lepsis was a, a tight end coming out of CU that was converted to left tackle and, and um, the things that Alex Gibbs could do with, with some talent, man was absolutely insane. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Broncos value the offensive line under a new regime. Now we do know that Nathaniel Hackett likes to run the ball. Well, get you some maulers then, you know, get you, get you some maulers and you're going to have plenty of ballers. Let's get that going. Make a t-shirt, you know, get us on good morning football uh, because Quinn miners, you love it. You absolutely love it. But Nick, something I've been wanting to ask you, what's up with your guy, Lindenbaum? Where's he going to go? Because I've been watching him a lot. I mm-hmm. love him. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry. Gosh, dang it. I love him too, but the play isn't quite where it needs to be. Where do you think your guy from Iowa is going to go? Ty- Lindenbaum is, am I pronouncing Lind- Linderbaum. 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 Okay. Yeah. I think he's going to go somewhere from pick 18 to 30. Um, that that's low? probably about it. That low because the center is just not very valuable. Um, Creed, last no, year, that's the best, Creed Humphrey out there. Did you see his where would where did he day? go? <laughs> yeah, the ideal male body. Yeah, but <laughs> he drafts drafted the end of the second round. Yeah, um, it's just it's right. a position that's not super valued. Um, the other thing about Linderbaum is that he is undersized. Um, he still came in what two ninety six sub thirty two inch arms, and uh, again, it's just a position that you can find competent centers throughout the draft, throughout free agency every year um he's really really uh man he's an absolute dog out there very aggressive um and he's not participating in a lot of the events because are not participating because he suffered a foot injury in the bowl game that iowa played he actually i thought it was a serious injury and then he went back out there after getting injured in a meaningless bowl game what are you doing kid i, I love how aggressive you are but sometimes you got to make a business decision um but um I, I like him a lot i think you see okay this is just this is it as well you know he's it doesn't matter if he's small of the arm length or whatever did we watch he's what mean. Jordan? Did we watch what Jordan Davis just did today? Did we watch what Travis Jones did, did today? No matter. Like I, I love Linderbaum. You can't leave him on an Island with a guy that's that big, that long. Chris and Jones, Chris Jones, but even like the, I'm talking these hulking nose tackles. It, it just, you can't do that. And luckily he's a center. He's going to have a guard flank to him every single time. Um, but that's again, that changes what you can do schematically with your pass protection. So he's an incredible athlete. He's so good at, uh, his spatial awareness, like his ability to climb and hit a, a moving target is rare for a center. So an outside zone scheme is going to love him, no doubt about it. But taking him in the top 15, given the limitations, he has both the size with the uh, schematic limitations as well. I just, I don't think that's something I would do. And that hurts me to say, because yeah, I, I met know. Linderbaum. I love Linderbaum. I love the Hawks. He's, he carries himself as well as anybody for that program. He's a dude. Um, but, uh, and could Linderbaum be a guard? I think he could, but you're really losing a lot of his, uh, his intelligence, um, at the guard compared to center. And also his, uh, his ability to climb is so good. I think you can hide him a little bit more with smaller size at center compared to guard as well. So could be a guard, but I think probably center is your best bet. 
In no way am I speculating that the Broncos and George Payton are looking for a center. That was just me wanting to ask because aren't we all looking for the next great offensive lineman? Such a rich history here in the Broncos. And you got a Dalton Reisner, you got a Quinn Miners, you got a Cushionberry who you hope gets a better start, but always got to be looking. Um, let's get in here with David Wilder. David, thank you for joining MHI tonight. Good evening, Nick, Luke, Scott, and Broncos country. I've missed listening to the pods in the past couple of weeks. My mother passed on Monday afternoon. I'm always happy when I can listen to the MHH podcast. Looking forward to free agency in the draft. I hope that Denver fixes the quarterback situation soon. Aaron Rodgers to Denver would be great as maybe a bridge quarterback. I don't think he's going to play very many years. Hashtag MHH for life. Hashtag Denver Broncos for life. Hashtag go Broncos. Thoughts and prayers to you and your family, David, and um, your mom. Let, let me know your mom's name. Give us a, Let's give her a shout out on the, on the chat um our my mom is so important to me nick i know your mom is so important to you and i've got a wife who's a mother as well and our our thoughts and prayers are certainly with you please reach out to any one of us if there's anything that we can do dm us whatever um thoughts and prayers with you thanks for the support and we we're happy to show you some love right back yeah really sorry to hear about that david um seriously the dms are open on twitter so if you're just looking for and escape um, from reality just for a bit. You want to talk a little bit of draft prospects or heck, I don't know, hiking. I, I don't know what you're into besides the Broncos, David, um, but uh, DMs are open. So, you know, for real, this is a community and we're here to talk football. You know, this is, this is work for Luke and I it doesn't feel like work half the time because we're having a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and shout out, he says mom's name's Pearl. Shout out to Pearl. Uh, oh, that's such a pretty, Pearl. that's such a pretty name too, David. Yeah. That's such a pretty name. That's a name you don't hear ever. I like those classic old school names and just to get off tap off topic, since we're already off topic here, I already getting a little emotional, but like when we're getting ready to name our daughter, I'm trying to think of like old classy names that aren't usually out there right because everybody's got a kid yeah. named you know johnny or or whatever but uh, pearl that's a really really pretty name thoughts and prayers and uh continued energy but yeah let's let's we're talking the draft we're talking free agency we're talking trades got about 15 more minutes here let's open up the chat line travis is coming back in here uh, appreciate you travis travis a huge supporter and a good friend of ours who do you like in the offensive tackles and what DBs beyond Stingley and Gardner do you like and who is good to draft? Man, Sauce Gardner, I really, really like him. Who doesn't? Um, offensive tackles, man. I, I mentioned Deesh in the what fourth or fifth round, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you want to if you want to draft an offensive tackle, I think there's a big gap between the first round and the second round. Um, Charles Cross, Mississippi State. Uh, okay. Um, I, I was impressed with how he moved. Honestly, I did not think he'd be as explosive as he was. And uh, listening to Lanton Zerline, uh, whose father was a longtime uh, offensive line coach, uh, yeah. talked about his movement skills and how much his body has changed over the last few years. He talked about watching Missis Mississippi State tape from 2020, and he's like, oh, that can't be Charles Cross. Who the, Who is that person? Um, but he's really worked on his body and added a lot of muscle uh, to him. He's never going to be a guy. He's probably always going to have some anchor concerns. Um, but, uh, he's a really good mover, really smooth pass protector and he tested really well. Um, so the Broncos took him at nine. I'd honestly have no issue with that. I, I'm curious to see what the board looks like at the time. I honestly, am also thinking right now, does Charles cross get past six where it sounds like everybody come out of the combine is like the Panthers are going to take a tackle there pretty much no matter what. Um, I think that's a team that's gearing up to go really hard after Deshaun Watson. Um, so to fix the offensive line, the Panthers, I think have started a different left tackle eight seasons in a row. You guys in Den Broncos country get freaking out about your tackles, but imagine being a Panthers fan <laughs> starting eight different guys in eight years. Um, but there are some good tackles that you could talk about later in the draft. Um, see a comment here from Clee uh, that's uh, Abraham Lucas actually tested really well. He's probably going to have to do some work developing his run game, but he's got the frame. He's got the movement yep, skills. Washington state. Yep. Really interesting player. Nicholas Petit Friere is an interesting one as well. Uh, what Bernard about, go ahead. What about penning? I know that's like a second rounder for me. Oh, he's, like he's going to go first. He's he tested so? way too well. He'll go in the top 20. Um, oh, okay. There's way too much demand for the tackle. I think Daniel Jeremiah just mocked him six to the Panthers. I think Cross will go first, Um, but Pre Penning's getting a lot of hype. I'd be surprised Holy if he doesn't cow. go in the top 20. Yeah. Wow. Do you think Penning after is the pro day? Well, offensive line pro days. I mean, they are where he, they are. He might sit on it because he did so well at the combine. It might yeah. just be interviews. Well, I'm wondering, do you think he could catch up to Cross then? If you wouldn't be surprised to see Cross go in the 10? I mean, could you see Penning... Top 15, it, top 10 fringe. I, 
I could see it just because sometimes for offensive tackles, I mean, we're talking about it with the Broncos right now. Uh, the type of scheme you're running really does matter. And if you're a team that's looking to drop back 40 times a game and you need a pass protecting left tackle, Cross is your guy. Cross will be higher for you than Penning. But if you're a team that wants to be pretty 50-50 split in terms of the run game and the uh, the pass game, you're looking to do a little bit more power uh, types of runs. You're looking to use quarterback run type of things. You need somebody who's not just a right tackle but could probably also play guard. Move, you're probably yeah. going to prefer uh, Penning over Cross. So and, and that's so valued, Nick. I mean, yep. we, we talk about um, your guy. I'm blanking his name from Iowa for Tampa Bay. Tristan uh, Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs. Oh, and I I'm, I mean, I, I wasn't high on him, if I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. And I am so impressed and just so like, wow. And he hasn't even he hasn't even reached what he could be yet. And yeah. the versatility on the offensive line is something that has to be extremely valuable to teams these in today's day and age with players going down. And I know whatever is whatever about the sick little bug thing, but it, it's just, you've got to have versatility. Players have got to be able to plug these guys in and out when a guy goes down. Uh, yeah. D- David golf is calling his shot there real quick saying Rogers isn't coming to Denver book it. And uh, I wanted to give him a shout out because uh, fans feel very passionate one way or the other. And then there's everybody else in the middle sitting there waiting and wondering, trying to make some sort of sense of it all. And yeah, uh, when do you think we're going to know, Nick? I mean, that's the question, right? It's not so much as where right now, it's when. Because it's just like, man, I wrote an article with Cliss saying it's going to happen last week. It didn't. And then he's missing Pat McAfee. And now he's officiating David Bakhtiari's wedding. And who knows what kind of cleanse he's going to be doing next week. I mean, it's just the Aaron Rodgers world. And we're all living in it. It does sound like there's some talk about Tuesday being the day. That's the day that the, uh, I believe... Uh, the teams have to make official as far as the franchise tags. And there's going to be a lot surrounding Devonte Adams at that time as well. So they're going to have to figure out some cap stuff uh, to even get Devonte Adams to fit under there. So to, I would, I think everything's pointing towards Tuesday for them. Um, we'll see. And thank you very much for the support here, Phil. Thanks, Phil. We appreciate it. And we also got, uh, Oh, go ahead, Scott. You can pull that one up. There you go. Peter Middleton. Thank you so much for the support, Peter. Uh, so who is the draft or free agency signing to replace Hamler? If he's struggling from his injuries this season, Need a speedster like him on this team. It would be good to get some speed on here. Um, but I think right now you probably, unless the board falls to you a certain way, you you go into the draft. Like if, if a guy you love, that's a speedster falls to you. Awesome. I don't think you have to walk out of the draft with the speedster per se. Um, you Unless it's somebody who's also a kick returner and punt returner, which the Broncos really need. Um, but it, I think you probably just wait on Hamler. You still got two more years of control left. Uh, he's looked really good when he was healthy. Um, but it depends on how the board falls uh, completely. I think that, uh, who was it, Calvin Austin um, from Memphis just had an incredible uh, pro, or a p- incredible combine. He's very diminutive. Um, he's probably a little bit more like Isaiah McKenzie even than K.J. Hamler because he is that small. K.J. Hamler's actually got a little bit of a little bit of meat on his bones, um, but very fun player. So th- that's a name to keep an eye on. But I don't think you have to have that guy. Um, and just looking at the Packers as well, they didn't really have that guy either. It was more important to have some big bodies that uh, could threaten down the field and also could block. That's a big thing as well. I think that wide receiver blocking, you know, it's not going to get guys paid, but it's going to make you much more dangerous because if you could run the ball out of 11 personnel, you can be dangerous. Yep. Um, that's It's so important. And it opens things up for you. I mean, yep. we talk about it every week. How about, I love the question, Peter, and I'm frustrated like you are too. I'm so tired of these track stars that come in with these injuries, Nick, because they're so damn explosive that their bodies aren't holding up to that speed. And Tyree Kill, I don't know what that dude's doing. I mean, yep. he's can't stand the man. Love the player. Uh, but it, it's just one of those things. How about uh, Jahan Dotson? I was just mm-hmm. looking up because uh, I've been keeping a loose eye on him because he's one of those little speedy receivers, right? Penn State. So maybe he even has a little look at that KJ Hamler connection. And wouldn't it be a weird twist of fate considering uh, KJ Hamler came here and had previously played yeah. with what, what, what was his name again? Uh, I'm forgetting his name here. The receiver that was here. He took his job. Uh, Deshaun Hamilton. Deshaun Hamilton. Is he still in the league these he days? He, he tore his ACL like a year ago at this time. Um, so he's a he's going to be a free agent, I believe. Who was he with? Do you remember? He was with Denver. It was his last year of control. Deshaun Hamilton. Yep, he tore it and he got injured before the season even started. Interesting. So he was. Yeah, on that's IR a name I haven't said or thought of in a long time. Yeah. Um, David coming back in. Appreciate the support, David. And love the conversation. I'm hoping KJ Hamler is healthy by the start of the season. I was so happy when Denver drafted him. 
Uh, you might be one of the only ones, David, if I'm being honest, because we were all sitting there screaming, you just got Jerry Judy, the best thing since Jerry Rice, right? Um, man, and then KJ Hamler, they go back to back. You can talk about Elway, you know, leaving a, a mic drop moment yeah, for his drafts and everything like that, because that was weird, man. Back to back receiver and yeah. the Broncos have not yet really seen an ROI on either one of those investments. Yeah, absolutely. And just some more data coming in here. We're getting starting to get the uh, edge rusher uh, agility drills coming in. Um, Trayvon Walker with a six, eight, nine, three cone. Um, absolutely. This guy's an alien. Uh, yeah, I am. That's un. This is a six, guy. Eight, who's nine. Six, eight, nine for somebody who's six, five, two, seventy five. This is that's unbelievable. And with a seven foot wingspan. Where's my um, guy, Jermaine? Where's my uh, guy? He is in the next wave. Um, he's oh, still doing right. the, the run. So Boye Mafe and Jermaine Johnson are the two names to keep an eye on for that that second wave of the uh, the edge rushers. But really, really, really incredible. Uh, I did a mock draft with a bunch of other people, and they those fools. I went edge rusher back to back because it was too good. I got <laughs> Trevon Walker at nine, and then I got Boye Mafe at forty. Both those guys are going to go looking like they're going to go before the Broncos pick in both those spots. Ooh, going back to back edge, man. Pulling out a, a good. sheet of um, of John Elway's well, playbook there. Yeah, Walker's also different because like he's a base end, but on third down, you're playing him at three technique. You're using twists and stunts on the inside and getting some crazy athleticism and getting him isolated against a guard, which good luck. Uh, <laughs> there's just not many that athletes that can hang with him. Um, but Amari Cooper, uh, Travis coming in saying Amari Cooper likely to be released, if not traded. Thoughts? I think it's crazy. And this comes back to don't pay running backs big deals that uh, – are prohibitive long-term, you know, if you're paying one, a big deal, that's, you know, one year, two year, where at least you have some flexibility. Uh, Nick's to talking it. about Ezekiel Elliott folks, yes. because, and, and not to interrupt you, Nick, but just to get, set yeah. the stage for your argument here. Cause I completely agree what Jerry Jones has done with Ezekiel Elliott's contract and money has hamstrung this team. And now they're getting rid of one of their their strengths in their wide receiver core. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's just like not surprised. But to your point, Nick, I mean, you double down the money on Ezekiel Elliott and these running backs and Melvin Gordon. If you think Melvin Gordon's going to want to take a cheap contract to come here, you are crazy. He can get out there on Radio Row and, and spit into the mic and how much he loves Denver. He wants to get paid and yeah. other teams are going to be pounding on the door, too. So while it may look like Melvin's campaigning or even i've i saw some guy on twitter be like he's desperate bro and i'm like he first of all he's an nfl running back that is going to be after you know a few different teams this next year but i just don't see it man um amari cooper that's weird that's a really weird one but what they give up for him from the raiders second rounder i think it was uh i don't two, remember two twos i mean that was that weird rounder. That was that year, weird year, and I know Scott's on it in the background. That was that weird year, I think, when the Raiders were still in Oakland and yeah. Cooper was uh, upset and wanted out. And that might have been right after Khalil Mack a season yeah. later or a previous was dealt. So going back in the stupid machine, but maybe you see Amari Cooper landing spots, Nick. What do you what do you think about that? I mean, maybe Baltimore. Um, you try to beef up the offense a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. Just try to think about the AFC West a little bit. Chargers don't need it. Raiders, I don't see them wanting to go after him. He's already left there. <laughs> so. I think if I if I could pick any team right now, I would say the team that needs to just throw the bag at him is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They don't have any receiving options right now that are DJ Chark is going to be free agent. LaVisca Chenault never really materialized there. Um, they have nobody, and it sounds like they're going to use their first pick on an offensive tackle pretty much no matter what. So throw the bag at Amari Cooper. Uh, help Trevor Lawrence out. I think Amari Cooper's from – Miami originally okay. as well. It's where, so it's, it's a team that uh, they need him a lot. Um, and they have a lot of cap space that they can throw at him as well. And Scott weighing in here, cleaning things up for me as I make a mess. The Oakland Raiders sent the Amari uh, sent wide receiver, Amari Cooper to the Dallas Cowboys for a 2019 first rounder. And it's just like, man, and they're just letting him, letting him walk off. And it makes you wonder what Dak would think about that one. Um, Dak and Jerry Jones relationship and just the drama that is the Dallas Cowboys. I just, I'm so over it. It's every year there's something you hear about the off season surgeries. Uh, it's just absolutely insane. One thing else, one other thing I wanted to bring up was Saquon Barkley. You're starting to yeah. hear that name be circulated this last week. Tommy's saying Saquon Barkley is a bust. It's been a running back. That's just hurt all the time. And uh, I, I think 
anyone would have a hard time paying those running backs and extending them, but yep. trading for one. I mean, what could you imagine a team trying to give up for Saquon Barkley, Nick? Or what would you give up for Saquon? What do you think is realistic? Because I have no clue, to be honest. I don't think he's a first. I wouldn't give up any first, and I don't think any other GMs would either. But I consider second round, the second round might be one of my favorite rounds, like ever in every draft. Because uh, you can, that's where you really make your bones. Yeah. Uh, prob- as far as what would I give up for Saquon Barkley, probably a fourth. Um, he's way more talented than that, but he, you're only going to get one year of control of him and he's been injured. hasn't looked the same. So, uh, you're taking on a decent contract, just one year of control. I'm not giving up more than that. Uh, just, just, I'm not, um, we also got Kathy coming in and Damian Pierce didn't, or Damian Pierce didn't test that well. Any thoughts on that, Nick? I was surprised he didn't test better than he did. Um, still though, he's a bowling ball and for the running back 40 yard dash, is it's more about like he didn't run a four eight he didn't run a four seven so that's more important uh than the the fastest guys you know the fastest running backs if you look at the fastest wide receivers and honestly for wide receivers and running backs it's the fastest guys don't typically work out to be the best players at their position um a lot of times so you actually see a better you see a better correlation with offensive tackle high 40 times being successful than running back and wide receiver which is crazy um but again it's more about the not being too slow. And I didn't think uh, Pierce was too slow. He probably, if he could have ran a little bit better, maybe you're talking about him being a round three pick. Now he's probably more of a round four guy. That's fine though. Uh, that's, that's probably what and he should have been anyway. And he's strong, right? He put up 21 yep. reps at 225. He's that yep. kind of bowling ball. Like you said, yep. um, he's, you already, ha- you got him in Javante and a, a much better version. I feel like, so yep. uh, I would be shocked if the Broncos went that way. We, I think naturally decide, Okay, we got thunder. Now we need to go get lightning. It would be cool if they had a speed back, but I'm you're interested. I'm interested in Mike Boone. We want to see what this guy can do because I yeah. think there is something there. Um, let's get to Diamond Rattler in the house. Really appreciate you giving us a five dollar super saying mile high salute. Mile high salute to you. Really appreciate you joining Nick Scott and I on MHI. And then Todd, Todd's in the stream now saying what's up to myself, Dylan, Scott. Nick in Broncos country. Todd's absolutely a huge member of MHH and what we do. And David is just deep into football. I absolutely love it. He's a junkie just like we are, Nick. And here we go. My thinking is that those two have a lot of potential. Let us know which two uh, you're referencing, David. And if he comes back from this injury, he could be a really great, great deep threat, especially if the quarterback situation gets solved. I'm trying Mm -hmm. to speculate. KJ Hamler. Oh, KJ Hamler. Okay. All right, KJ Hamler, Nathaniel Hackett's offense, slot wide receiver. Uh, could you see some reverses, some cute little plays like Pat Shermer liked to run, or are we going to see some quick slants? Let's get this guy the ball so he can get yak. Yeah, I think it's probably more that. Um, hopefully, work in some uh, some slot fades um, from him. He's really good at that, and also some crossing routes where if you can get him a, get a foot race with a hanging the. Uh, drop back linebacker in coverage or a safety, you know, that's, that's a battle where you can actually get some yards after the catch and everybody wants yak weapons. But I think the average uh, yards after catch for a reception in the NFL is like 1.2 yards or something. So to get guys who can actually do some yak stuff is pretty rare. And sometimes is even more so based on the, these guys being running backs in the open field versus track stars yeah. in the open field, you know, like the AJ the Browns of the world, the Debo Samuels of the world. Those are the ones who actually get in the yak yards, not so much the Tavon Austin, KJ Hamlers, the small guys who are quickie and twitch. You want somebody who can uh, have linebackers and safeties bounce off them as much as anything. So uh, David coming in though, talking about again, David, um, again, shout out to you and your family. Hope you're yeah, doing man. well. Sorry to hear about your, uh, your mother Pearl, but uh, we're thinking about you and hopefully giving you a little bit of a, uh, a distraction here while this and- is going on. And one thing I want to give a huge shout out to all of our listeners and our support staff and absolutely everybody, Uh, man, it's cool to see total strangers embrace each other and try to lift each other up. And this has been, you know, a couple of years we've been doing this show now, and I know you've seen it on some of your other shows and I've seen it other places I've been when you have folks that completely open up and, and vent on a podcast or on a live stream or something like that that's a vulnerable thing man that's a very hard thing to do and i I couldn't be more proud of our mhh community trying to prop these folks up and make them feel better and just let them know they're they're not in it alone because uh we're all people under the same sun man and and we got to get through this crazy life desert creature showing us some life with that five dollar super we appreciate you saying have a great weekend and uh yeah man it's hard to believe we're in march nick i'm the daylight savings time thing is coming up soon yeah. free agencies here the draft is going to be here before we know it yep 
Yes. Be here before you know it, man. I'm just, it's the best day. It's one of the best draft days of the year. The defensive linemen doing the testing, especially with a class like this. So I'm excited to pour over the mock draftable spider webs and looking at the Ross uh, right now, Trevon Walker right now testing as one of the, one of the best athletes at the position of all time uh, so far. So I don't, I've mocked him to the Broncos. Scott and I do a Monday mocks um, on Monday morning shows. We'll have another one this Monday. I'm guessing that Trevon Walker is not going to be available from the Broncos pick at nine. Sorry, Broncos country. You might have to find a different one there, but uh, we'll see. I'm also really excited to see tomorrow will be the defensive defensive backs. Look out for Daxton Hill. Um, He is an absolute, he's not massive. So that might knock us some of his scores, but um, his actual raw testing data is going to be insane. Um, And then also you have Kyle Hamilton, who I saw some people like people are getting really upset because uh, you're disparaging Justin Simmons, how good of an athlete he is. Justin Simmons is really good at safety. But he ran, I think, a four six five forty, which is fine, but not great. He also was pretty light, like six two. Um, obviously, one skinny of the best safeties in football. When he came out, dude, yeah. he was sk- scrawny, scrawny. They had to beef yeah. him up down there at UC Health. Yes, they did. Um, and he's again been one of the best safeties in football. I love that he's playing in a two high scheme because I think he's doesn't have the pure burning speed to be a single high sideline to sideline. Also, don't think he has the mass to be that box safety. But when you're playing too high, I think he's a great fit. Kyle Hamilton, like let's say you have Justin Simmons and Madden. Now imagine him making him like 10 pounds heavier, two inches taller, and like increasing all of his attributes by five. Like his just speed, changing him his strength. You know, <laughs> just, just just stretching him out a little bit, like the evolved ev- version of Get Justin him bigger, Simmons. like when you, yeah. you're on the size screen and you're trying yes. to like scoot it to the right, that arrow. <laughs> yeah, have you have you seen uh, Free Guy yet with no. uh, Ryan Reynolds? Okay, it's, uh-uh. it's really funny. I'm a big Ryan Reynolds fan. Um, but, I'm uh, a Deadpool guy, so I okay. can I get down with Reynolds. It's yeah, funny, for it's sure. Um, but they make a... Uh, I guess spoiler alert here if you guys haven't heard it yet. Um, but uh, they make a version of his character in that video game world that's like decked out like big and massive and like jacked Ryan Reynolds to, to beat him up. And that's essentially what Kyle Hamilton is to Justin Simmons. Bigger, faster, stronger freak. Um, he's going to test. And hey, because these edge rushers are killing it so much, the offensive tackles and whatnot, maybe Kyle Hamilton, because he's a safety Falls Cat? down to nine for Denver. That would be Ooh. incredible. I'm oh, putting it out down. There. Oh, no. Oh, no, you didn't. Right as we're trying to get off the show, he's saying the safety. Do you realize Broncos country would just be down there with pitchforks and lanterns? They were upset about Pastor Tan last year. Dude, I mean, I trust me, I, I'd be okay with it. But yeah, George Payton, how do you sell that one, man? That would be really tough. And look, you're getting all kinds of love. Free guy's awesome. Free guy's yeah. so funny. I will check that out. It was worth maybe it. A, it's very maybe a good. date night, maybe a date night movie. But Ryan Reynolds, dude, I was watching. Do you realize he was in Blade? He was in Blade Trinity. Yep. I was, yep. I love Blade, total movie guy, comic nerd, all that kind of crap. But uh, yep. dude, this was an awesome show. I feel like the shows are getting more momentum as we go and we're getting closer and closer. And that's just the natural energy of how these things manifest. Um, I couldn't be more happy and proud to be a part of the show with you guys, man. Scott does so much work. Huge shout out to Scott. He's been slaving away, working with his kids all day and hopped on. I know you've been working. I've been working a lot of overtime, man. We have really put our heart and souls into this, but let us know how we can improve. Um, let us know how we can get better and DM us. I mean, like Nick said, man, we'd love to talk to you guys. We'd love to reach out to you guys. This isn't just our job. This is our passion. And uh, Nathan is showing some love with a 199 super sticker here at the end of our show. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, that that Those kind of little things like that, whether it be generosity or um, you know a monetary donation, that keeps us going. And uh, I'm just super proud of us, man. We're doing great as, as a team. We're doing great as an MHH community. And I just wanted to give a huge shout out to everybody because I couldn't thank you guys enough for the platform. Yeah. And another sad bit here, but uh, Todd said he lost his uncle this morning as well. So uh, it's awesome we're, prayers, here, Todd. we're here for you guys. Yeah, gosh, it's uh it's really tough to see some of you guys down like that right now with uh, everything like that. So sorry to hear that. Um, hope you guys are, good and I, I don't know if you guys are on twitter or whatnot but seriously dms reach are open out. reach out yep if you want to talk some ball and it I happens will, all talk. the time no one yeah. yeah like it happens all the time total strangers it's you know nick's a very he's the same guy on the you know on the mic but even funnier because we can, don't get in trouble for half the words that we say but it, it, including me on this pod so apologies yeah. right now chad but no man reach out my guy gage just hopped in i appreciate you gage he's always showed us love kathy has always showed us tons of love as well peter EJ, everybody in the stream. For Scott, Nick, I'm Luke saying go Broncos and stay tuned for more Aaron Rodgers Watch. The Huddle Up Boys will be back tomorrow. Go Broncos. You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.